Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied. Just to see you glorified Take the stage, Lord And have your way Am your vessel, Lord And nothing more Come on, brothers and sisters, welcome to another Sunday morning reflection And boy, the Days and the months are going quickly. And um, you wonder where the time is fleeting to. As one Sunday comes, another returns. The sign that the coming of Christ is near at hand because the days shall be shortened for the elect's sake. And we believe we are in those last days. I want to welcome you again as we continue to face our challenges and as I speak, I heard that there is a dip in the numbers of COVID virus, both in the hospitals and in the nation at large. And we have been praying towards that end, and we are trusting God that it will go to zero. Welcome again, brothers from the Bar and sisters from the Baritone congregation, from the Lilliput congregation, from the Mount Zion Charge. Welcome um farmites by extension and we welcome all of you re listen to us both in the um the caribbean in the diasporas across the um, north america europe and elsewhere and may god bless you as we share in the word of god today we are focusing on um depression and how we can be lifted from depression with divine assistance um we want to commence this morning with a song come morning trust that it will inspire and bless your heart
Come morning, brothers and sisters. There will be glory. There are many of us who are going through a midnight at this time, but the Bible tells us that the darkest part of the night is when day is about to break. And I believe that day is about to break upon so many of us today. Let us look to God for those who are challenged, disenfranchised, and, and are needing our prayers at this time. Father, we just look to you as our God, our source of strength, our light in the midst of the darkness. And there are so many that are going through challenging situations at this time, Lord, that are failing in their faith because the time is so rough. There are so many that are broken, so many that are sick, that are wounded, that are grieving. And Father, we just commit them to you right now. We commit them to you, those in our country that are grieving. There are so many people that you have heard, popular persons, familiar faces that have lost their lives and their families are grieving. We ask you to strengthen them, to bring them comfort, to bring them peace. We pray, God, that you will lift us out of this situation that we're in right now. Transform us, our schools, our institutions, our government, our leaders of opposition, O God Almighty, our our secular private sector, public sector, we ask you, Lord, to minister peace. We pray for the broken. We pray for those that are confined to their homes and are challenged and are tested. Lord, those who have lost jobs, who have lost properties and assets, we ask you, Lord, to speak to them, help them to look to you. Lord, we pray for those in the different countries, North America, Lord, in Canada, the US, Europe. We pray for those in Scotland, our brothers and sisters there in Aberdeen, Scotland, the Ruby Slaw congregation, the pastor, members. We present them to you right now. We present, O oh God Almighty, Lord, our own church and our own people, our families. Lord, that you will grant them grace, our sick, our helpless, the disenfranchised, Lord, we are the grieving, we are the hurting. We present them to you right now. And let your Holy Spirit bring them comfort and healing and wholeness of life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Come morning, there will be glory for me. Yes, brothers and sisters, at this time we're going to be looking to the word of God. We trust that the word that will be spoken today will bring you comfort and will bring you strength. Um, well, we are going to be looking at Psalm 42, a very familiar passage. But I trust that it will bring healing to you and bring victory in your life. Turn your Bibles with me. I hope you have your Bibles beside you so you can read along with me. Psalm 42. And I will read from verse 1 to verse 6. As a, as a heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul for thee, O God. My soul thirsts for, for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I poured out my soul in me. I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I will yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Wherefore will I remember thee? For the land of Jordan and of the Ammonites, from the hills of Mizar. This is the word of the Lord. Father, will you speak to us? Speak words of comfort, word of peace, word of strength, and word of healing. In Jesus' name. Breaking the spirit of depression through divine assistance now brothers and sisters last week we focused on anxiety and so today we want to look at depression depression are what is called major depressive disorder it's said to be a common medical illness that negatively affects how one feels and the way one think or act. Depression causes feelings of sadness and or deep, a deep sense of loss, of interest in activities that was one in, once enjoyed by an individual. Now, depression can lead to a variety of emotional, psychological, and physiological problems and decreases one's ability to function at home, at work, or wherever they are, to the maximum. People experiencing depression will experience a feeling of sadness and a deep depressed mood, loss of interest, or pleasure in activities one used to enjoy, changes in one's appetite, weight loss, one may gain weight or one may lose weight, mm. both ways it can affect you in relation to dieting, trouble, one will have trouble sleeping or one may just end up sleeping too much. One may lose energy or increase fatigue in their lives. One sense would lose a sense of purpose. One will become slow in their movement, slow in speech, feeling worthless, or having a feeling of, of, of guilt, sometimes entertaining thoughts of death or death by suicide. 
willing to withdraw themselves from others. When you see people become withdrawn and are by themselves, it's a sign of that sometimes they're going through deep depression. If all of these things, brothers and sisters, last for over a week or two, and you feel that all of these symptoms I've just described is becoming chronic and part of your experience, then it's a sign that you may be experiencing depression and you need to seek help before it gets worse. It is said that depression affects an estimated 1 in 15 others in any given year and are in six people will out of a hundred will experience depression at one point or another in their lives. It is said that depression can occur at any time. Depression of however is said to be one of the most treatable emotions and medical um, Persons have said people have responded to treatment, um, whether, whether it is medication or through psychotherapy. And it is said that the biblical therapy is one of the best medicine for depression. So out of, out of 80 to 90 percent of people who are treated always respond favorable to treatment to depression. Now, it is said, brothers and sisters, that the Bible alludes quite a bit to persons in the Bible who have experienced depression, even people who are servants of God and who were considered to be close to the Lord. They experienced depression. Now, it was said that they, it was to depression that the Bible alludes when Elijah fled from Jezebel, according to 1 Kings 19 and verse 1 to 7, and went under a juniper tree, indicating that even the servant of God, prophet of God, one of the greatest of prophets, experienced depression, depressed mood. Now, according to verse 2, of the same 1 Kings 19 verse 1 to 7. It was Jezebel, the wife of Heab, that sent him into depression. Now, hear what Jezebel says. And Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not your life as one of, the, of theirs. Now, you know that she was alluding to the prophets who Elijah, after having a competition with them, and Mount Carmel and their God failed that Elijah took them to the valley and slew all of them. Then they were all the prophets of Baal and they ate at Jezebel's table. And so Jezebel said that she was going to get Elijah for it. And this great man of God fled. When he got the message, he fled for his life. Verse 3 to 4. And verse 4 says, and he requested, he went and he, verse 3, went and he sat under his juniper tree. And verse 4, part B says, and he requested for him that he might die and said, it is enough now, Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And verse 5 says, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, the Bible tells us an angel came and touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Now in verse 7, the angel came and told him to get up for he has long, a long journey ahead of him. Now, this man of God was experiencing depression. One, based on some of the things that I described earlier, one, he would draw himself and fled. He left his servants and fled, walked uh, about a day's journey into the wilderness apart from his servants. And then when he went to the juniper tree where he sat in his depression, he wanted to die and was 
He was sleeping, trying to sleep it off. Well, he could not sleep it off. These are sure symptoms and signs of depression that Elijah was experiencing. Now, God intervened. God touched him and lifted him up. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we fall into the valleys of depression after we would have had a mountain top of spiritual victories and experiences. And after he was upon after Elijah was upon ten feet of mountain top, he found himself under a juniper tree, which was by interpretation the tree means broom bush bush, something where you're going to cut a broom to sweep the yard. So from the top the ten feet of mountain top experience to hitting rock bottom at the ground. He touched the ground, but God touched him and raised him up. Because there is no bout of depression that any of God's children goes through that God cannot raise you from. Now forms Psalm 42, from which we read, shows the psalmist suffering from a, a severe bout of depression. Here the psalmist in verse 3, of Psalm 42, my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? In other words, the psalmist was not eating. All he sat down and cried. The tear went in his mouth and it was a very terrible experience. He says, my tears has been my meat. That is serious depression. And verse 5 says, he, he asked himself the question, why art thou in verse 5 and verse 11? Said in verse 5, reiterated in verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall let praise him. For he is the help of my countenance. In other words, the psalmist was really feeling dejected. So he asked himself, O oh, why art thou cast down within me? O my soul. In verse 6 he said, O my soul, my soul is cast down within me. In other words, he was, he was so despondent. He feel as if he was dying inside. He was hurting so much. So much pain. So much dejection. Embarrassment. He felt like a base. So he says, why art thou cast down within me? According to the pulpit commentary, the question the psalmist asked, why art thou cast down within me? Which is also interpreted, Why art thou bowed down? Indicates the extreme low and the very extreme of dejection that he was experiencing. And according to the, com the commentator, the spirit of higher reason rebukes the soul for allowing it itself to sink in such deep depression when there is a God Yes, brothers and sisters, when there is a God. And that's why this, the, the, the higher spirit was, uh, was rebuking the soul. It says, once there is a God, why, how did you get here? Right? And therefore, the spirit of higher reason appeals to the soul to hope in God as a remedy for such depth of depression. Sometimes life situations have dealt us such a hard blow. And in, other, and, and in order for us to be lifted, we have to revoke, uh, sorry, invoke God's divine presence to lift us up and to make us stand again. There's a song we used to sing, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith and even stable land. The higher plain that I have found, Lord, plant my feet and I ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubt arise and fear dismay. Lord, lift me up. Let me stand by faith and even stable land. Now to break the spirit of depression, brothers and sisters, with divine assistance, there are some things that we must observe. One, according to verse 4, when we face with depression, you have to remember how to pour out your soul within you. 
So here the psalmist in verse 4, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me, for I, have, I went with the multitude to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. So the psalmist was saying here, I pour out my soul, I appeal to heaven because I recognize I don't have to be in this state because before I call to remember remembrance that I have been with the multitude in the house of God and I've seen how God cut loose those who were bound. Hallelujah. I have seen, heard the voice of joy and praise, the multitude that kept holy day. So when I hear this, I pour out my soul within me. In other words, I must be appealing to God. I melt before him and ask him to rescue me. The term pour out means, brothers and sisters, that his heart melt and dissolve by grief and pain before God, God's presence. In other words, his soul was now appealing to heaven to lift him, become so broken, penitent before God. God will not overlook a heart that melts before him. He will give it some heavenly attention. In Psalm 51 and verse 17, hear what the Bible says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. God will give attention to a heart that is broken. And tonight, today, if you are broken, brothers and sisters, let your soul be poured out, melt before the presence of God. And God will lift you up from where you are and he will set you free and he will rescue you from the bandage that you're in. In 1 Samuel 1 and verse 12 to 15, there's a lady by the name of Anna. As we know the story of Anna, who poured out her soul before the Lord within her. And the Bible says, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Verse 13, Now Anna, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought that she had been drunken. Eli in verse 14 said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away your wine from you. In verse 15, Anna responded to Eli and said, and answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Hmm? And the rest, brothers and sisters, is history. Because then Eli said, Rise and go your way. The Lord has granted you your petition. God will not turn his back. And a soul that is poured out, melting before his presence, in humility and in penitence. The Bible says sometimes we are in such state that we do not even know how to pray. So the Holy Spirit prays through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Hear what Romans 8 and verse 26 and 27 says. It said, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself make it intercession for us as with groanings which cannot be uttered in other words these it is all taking place inside groanings which cannot be uttered and verse 27 says and he that searches the heart knows what is in the knows what is in the mind of the spirit for he makes intercession for his saints. Yes, brothers and sisters, if we are going to break the spell of this depression, we have to learn how to pour out our soul within us. Now, in verse, in the second point I want to make is that if we are going to break the spell of depression through divine assistance, we have to learn how to reason with ourselves reason with ourselves here the psalmist why art thou cast down O my soul the psalmist was talking to his inner person why art thou disquieted within me 
Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, for he is the help of my countenance. The psalmist asks himself two questions, and then he gives him his soul a command. <laughs> shall he praise the Lord? He says, one, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why, what is your rationale? What rationale do you have as a child of God to be in such a valley of depression? So he says, why are you cast down? How did you reach down there? From, as, as, as Elijah, from the mountain top of 10 feet to under a juniper tree where it is a place where they cut broom bush. Why? How you reach there? Why art thou cast down within me? The second question he asked himself, why art you disquieted within me? Hmm? Why are you disquieted within me? In this context, to, be this, to, to experience extreme to be disquieted, to experience extreme anxiety and uncertainty and, and, and uneasiness and to have one take away the peace of tranquility from such a one. Right? So why art thou disquieted within me? And then he gives his soul the command, hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. And this brings me to my last point, brothers and sisters. To break the spirit of depression, you have to learn how to hope in the face of despair. Hope in the face of despair. Verse 5 and part B says, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, for he, for he is the help of my countenance. To hope is to have confident expectation in God through the lens of hope. We can look right through um, life's difficult situations and see God who keeps us in the face of difficulties. Hope in God is the end of the road for the suffering children of God. Hope in God lifts the spirit. Hope in God gives you the drive to go on. Hope in God propels you when you are tested, when you are challenged, and when you are in facing your situation. Hope is anchored in the reality and the power of the risen Christ, knowing that if Christ lives, then we can live also. Hear what Lamentation 3 and verse 26 says. It says, It is good that a person should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good that a person should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. In Jeremiah 17 and verse 7 to 8, it says, Blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For such person shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when difficult time comes. Blessed is that person who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Edmund Moat who lived between 1797 and 1874, penned the words of the song, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust my sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. The chorus go come ringing, and Christ, the solid rock I stand, for all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Brothers and sisters, we are cognizant of the fact that our people who have lost their loved ones, people who have lost jobs, People have been dislocated. People who feel like they should give up on life. People who have been vaccinated, but yet they are they are they are they have contracted the virus. We have just heard of the our nurse who used to advocate for the other nurses who passed. This is Haywood, I think. Who she was vaccinated, but yet she contracted the virus. And she met her demise as a consequence. And then you're saying, but this should give you hope. But hope is in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, there's so much things that cause us to 
be depressed today and can lead us into depression. But why are you cast down? Why are you depressed when there is better, when there is hope in God? The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give his peace. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I pray for all of you that are hurting right now. All of you that are broken. All of you that feel dejected. Jesus still comes and he gives peace. He will not pass you. God bless you. Lift your faith to him. Let your faith rise and he will rescue you.